Welcome to the Doctrinal Component with Tom Nettles, brought to you by Founders Ministries. Founders Ministries is a reformed teaching organization committed to the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of local churches. For more teaching material by Dr. Nettles, please visit founders.org. Hello, this is Tom Nettles with our next edition of the Doctrinal Component. We are speaking about 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. Again, the text says, I hope to come to you soon, but I'm writing these things to you so that if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. He was manifested in the flesh, vindicated by the Spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed on in the world, taken up in glory. So this the church of the living God is a pillar and buttress of the truth. Now the truth of God's word has been placed in the church and constitutes its most basic calling. We could look at the last book of the New Testament where John is speaking to the churches in Revelation 1 through 3. And there are a, a re repetition of a phrase in uh, chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, chapter 2, verses 7, 11, 17, 29, chapter 3, verses 6, 13, 22. This refrain is, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The apostles had no hesitation to set forth their words that they gave to the churches as the very truth of God, revealed by the Spirit of God, for the glory of God and for the health of God's people. So as Paul gives this instruction to Timothy, he tells him that he's giving it to him so one will know how he ought to behave himself in the household of God, and that is so important because the church of the living God is the pillar and buttress of the truth. This is saving truth. This is eternal truth. This is truth without any mixture of error. It is the truth that transforms our minds, that transforms our hearts. It's the truth that causes us to worship God and to know God and to find forgiveness of sins and to have the, the hope of eternal life. And so it is important that Timothy recognize that this instruction that Paul is giving him is in order that there might be a, a keen kind of concentration on this instruction because it is indeed the truth, the truth that can not be known in, in any other way. It is a truth that will never pass away. It is eternal truth, and it is that which will determine the nature of our relationship to God even in eternity. And so he says then, after he has given that, that the church is the pillar and buttress of the truth, he says, Great indeed, we confess, is the mystery of godliness. Now this is in harmony with a phrase that he has used several times in these letters. Uh, great indeed, we confess. This confession that he gives is what he might call in other places a faithful saying where he gives a short confessional statement about something that governs the thinking and governs the confession of the church. For example, in chapter 1, verse 15, we, said, <clears throat> we see this saying is trustworthy and deserving full acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners. So it's a faithful saying, a trustworthy saying. And then in 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning with verse 3, we say, <clears throat> uh, This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior. And then a statement that is a confession, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For... There is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, 
who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at its proper time. Then we have in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the saying is trustworthy, or this is a faithful saying. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. So the person who aspires to the office must know that it is a task that is intrinsically good. It is something that God himself has set aside. It is filled with the virtues of God because this is a person who is handled to handle the word of God and to be instant in season and out of season with his setting forth the truth of God. So this is a, a faithful saying, a trustworthy saying. Then in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, we see another evidence of, these, of this uh, kind of confession where uh, the apostle uh, is again writing to Timothy and he says, follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. So there is a pattern of sound words that Timothy is to follow. And this pattern of sound words is an accurate reflection of the good deposit that was given to Paul by revelation and then entrusted to Timothy uh, upon Paul's instruction. We see also in 2 Timothy 2 verses 11 through 13, where Paul says, Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they may obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, or this is a faithful saying. And then he gives another uh, confessional statement, which we might look at briefly later. So this, uh, this that Paul is giving in 1 Timothy 3, this thing that he says is the mystery of godliness, which we confess is a part of a pattern of confessions of faith that ha are given in the New Testament. Uh, in our next time, we're going to begin to look at why we should pay attention to these confessions of faith. What are, what are the values of seeking to follow the biblical model of producing confessions of faith that have irreducible truth in them? Thank you very much for listening today, and I look forward to our time as we continue looking at 1 Timothy 3, 14 through 16.